Hello everyone, Lisa here with Lisa Cape and Quilts and this week I have started a new t-shirt quilt. So many of you over on Facebook have asked if I would document my process throughout this quilt and do a vlog, video log, video blog. <laughs> and so I thought I would turn on the camera today and start filming the process of this quilt. Now up into this point I have done uh, a lot of organizing and so I'm just going to catch you up to where we are now. This is going to be a queen size collage style t-shirt quilt. I've used the two inch grid set on this quilt that offers a little bit more flexibility in cutting my block sizes and uh, we're going to have a lot of fun with this quilt. So I've used the two inch grid set and I've already planned out my quilt, so that's just going to fast track you to where we are now. Now one of the things that I love about this grid set is it comes as a PDF and I use a program called Inkscape. Inkscape is a free vectorizing software that you can download off of the internet and I've used it for about 10 years now. And What's really great about Inkscape is you can uh, import your PDF documents so you can import your grid set into Inkscape and make your blocks uh, and fit them and design your quilt and then save it as another PDF and print out your grid. So that's what I've done here. Many of you have asked what software I use to do that. But there is quite a bit of a learning curve with Inkscape. Again, I've used it for 10 years now and so I'm pretty uh, proficient with resizing and coloring blocks and all that stuff but you could as easily just draw in your blocks. I'm also going to link a video uh, to where I printed off several of the grid sheets and cut them and played with the different blocks just moving them around and pasting them in place. So this is using Inkscape. Uh, if you want to go on YouTube there's thousands of videos all about Inkscape. If you want to download the software and learn how to use it. Uh, it does make planning your quilts uh, pretty easy once you learn the software. <laughs> and I'm not really that great on filming technical videos with software, but maybe if enough people ask me how to do this, we'll do some technical videos. Uh, but the easiest way is just to draw in your blocks or print off copies and cut them and play with the different blocks on your sheet. So this is where I am. I've already gone through and cut apart all of my shirts and let me show you just how I stay organized with all of that. Here are all of my shirts just like this broken down into categories of colors and so that helps me when I'm in the planning stages uh, to try to avoid placing too many of the same colored blocks right next to each other. And because I only have a monochrome printer, you can't see all of the different colors. Maybe the darkest ones you can tell are black. And then there's some really light ones in here. Those are the light gray. But on the computer screen, I've colored those different colors so I can play with the color and spread it all out through uh, my quilt. So the way that I usually start is I have a blank four page PDF and the first two pages are categories of different colors. So I have white, beige, black, dark gray, light gray, red, maroon, pink, dark green, light green, dark blue, light blue, orange, yellow, brown, and purple. And those are the majority of t-shirt colors that we usually deal with uh, with our quilts. And then uh, I have two pages of numbered tabs, just like this. So what I usually do, just starting off, is I'll cut apart this first row. And then I cut these apart right on the lines. What I like about this PDF is it really speeds up the process because I used to just cut a whole bunch of little scrap pieces of paper and number them all by hand. And now when I do my quilts, 
uh, I just print this off and I'm ready to start cutting apart my shirts. So I stack them up and I'm ready to start documenting my t-shirts. So as I cut apart my shirts, I lay them out on my table, just like you see here, and I take a ruler and I measure my logo. Again, I'm working in increments of two inches, and so for this block, uh, I would cut it, let's see, let's make this one a little bit wider, 10 inches and 10 inches. And so on my little scrap of paper, I wrote 10 by 10, and you can see this is bl uh, block number 17. It corresponds with, let's find number 17 here on our map, right there. <laughs> so that's where this shirt is going to go in my quilt. So in my little blocks, I take the number from the tag and I write it onto my block. And so I know as I'm working through my grid, when I get to this uh, block, I'm working with this t-shirt. So once I've gone through and cut apart all of my shirts and measured them, assigned them a number and a measurement, I'm documenting that whole process as I go along here. I have little check boxes here because as I add that to the quilt, I go ahead and mark it off so I'm sure not to add the same block twice and I'm sure not to forget any of my blocks. So I use a little check box uh, once it's added into my grid to make sure that uh, it doesn't get forgotten or duplicated. <laughs> So that's how I use that and my little grid sets or my little tabs. There's a hundred of them. So I've never done a quilt where I've had more than a hundred logos to add. I'm sure that day will come, but uh, this works pretty well. So that saves me a lot of time and the whole setting up and preparing all of my t-shirt logos. So let me show you a picture here. This is all of my logos. I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, sixty some logos that will go into this quilt. And I usually like to group them in sets of 10. And that just makes it easier as I'm working. When I get to, we're going to start up here at the top, 39. I can just go over to the group that has all of the 30 numbers and flip through 10 shirts versus flipping through a whole stack of shirts, if that makes any sense. <laughs> So I usually group them in stacks of 10 and it just makes it faster finding each one of the shirts. For this quilt we're going to start right in this top left hand corner and I'm going to start cutting my shirts as I go along. So the first one we'll pull is number 39 and then we'll do 50 and 5 and 13. This quilt is going to be so much fun so let me tell you a little history about this client. <laughs> She's so sweet. I've made three quilts for her before, one for all three of her kids. And so this quilt is going to be for her. And she's been so patient and waiting to get hers done. She got all the kids taken care of. And so now we're doing a great big quilt for her. So she's been saving these shirts through all of her kids' school years. And she's been a team mom and you know, actively participated in all of their activities. So she has all of these shirts and uh, this should be a lot of fun for her quilt. I really wanted to make it uh, even more fun by adding some uh, quilting fabrics, some different colors into her quilt. So yesterday, I'll show you a picture. I went to Joanne Fabrics and uh, they had a sale with their, uh, let's see, what do they call it? Okay, the name had totally left my mind for a second. The Keepsake Calico Fabrics were 30% uh, off and then using a coupon you get the extra 20%. So I was able to pick up fabrics for half off and I purchased half a yard of each one of these lovely colors. And so these really correspond with her t-shirts the green is really something I haven't decided if I'm going to add. Uh, the majority of her shirts are blues, grays, and blacks. Uh, 
So, and there's like three t-shirts that are pink. So I wanted to spread pink more through her quilts. And some of, one of these pink fabrics has some green in it. Also, one of the blue fabrics has some green in it. So as an accent color, I may use some green just to add some pops of color throughout her quilt. So this is where we are. Uh, I just thought I would document this process because, uh, again, many of you have asked if I would bring you along and share my day with you throughout this quilt. And there's going to be some really fun techniques that I'm going to do adding the uh, quilting cotton and empty spaces on my grid. And I thought for some of the larger empty areas, like let's take a look at and find something I can point with. <laughs> Let's take a look at this area right here. That area is empty. It does not have a t-shirt quilt block assigned to it. And there's actually quite a few areas like that and I designed it specifically with some empty areas because I thought it would be fun to add some patchwork designs with our quilters cotton in those areas. And so yesterday afternoon I played with some pinwheels and different sizes so this might get incorporated into her quilt and I think that would be a lot of fun to add some design and color throughout her quilt along with her t-shirts. So this is really fun. Uh, I don't really have like a set uh, list of topics we're going to cover in this series. I just thought I'd bring you along, and if you have any questions along the way, I encourage you to jump down to the comment section and ask your questions, and maybe I can answer them in tomorrow's video. I'm just going to bring you along and film throughout my day. If I run across something that uh, I think you might be able to incorporate into your quilt, and uh, maybe some tips to share, then I'll film those. And uh, you can see this quilt being made from start to finish. I do know there's going to be quite a few partial seams in this quilt and so I'll show you those as we come to them. And we're going to do some embroidery in this quilt because I have three sections where we are going to embroider on fabric uh, the names of uh, her children. So all kinds of fun stuff with this quilt. I'm going to go ahead and plug in my iron and get that ready. We're going to be doing some fusing and some block cutting and I'm going to start right up here in this corner and probably cut out a few blocks and then stop because I'm going to piece this quilt together in chunks as we work our way through. So should be a lot of fun. I hope you uh, find this helpful and if nothing else you just watch along with me and spend some time with me throughout this quilt. So let's pop in and do a little status update. I've been busy stabilizing and cutting out my first two blocks. So let me show you what I've already done and maybe this will show up in the camera. As I cut my block, I like to color it just a light color to indicate that the block has already been cut. So I've cut out block 39 and block 50. So here is block 50 and block 39. So on my quilt, block 50, or 39 will be up at the top. Block 50 will be sewn right to the bottom of 39. I thought it was neat, this is a sweatshirt, to incorporate the pocket of the sweatshirt in the quilt. I love to add fun little elements like that in my quilts if I can. So here's my first two blocks, and we've come down to block 67. So I went ahead and pulled uh, my shirt numbered 67 and you'll see that the measurements originally when I measured this I wrote down 12 by 10. So when I measure my logos I don't go ahead and cut out the blocks and I'll tell you why. When I design my quilt you'll see, let me get a pointy thing again, you'll see in the place on my grid the 12 by 10 section I have a little bit of space that needs to be filled in around this block. So at this point, because we haven't cut the logo out yet, 
I can go ahead and adjust this if I have enough room around my logo with the shirt and just go ahead and fill in all of this space with the t-shirt instead of filling it in with extra patched in material. So that's the reason I do not cut out my logos before I ever even start. This gives me some flexibility. So I'm going to go ahead and change this and instead of 12 by 10, let's grab a pen. Instead of 12 by 10, let's increase it to 14 by 12. It would be nice if I had a pen that worked. <laughs> Y'all ever notice I have technical difficulties. So from 12 to 14 and from 10 to 12. And this shirt allows me plenty of room to add the extra two inches all the way around. So now when I go to stabilize this, I'll make sure to stabilize a section that is a little bit bigger than 14 by 12. I'll stabilize that and cut it out. And now I'll be filling in this whole section instead of patching in little areas around this block. So let me go ahead and do that and that'll give me three logos. Then I think we're gonna go ahead and move up here. So when I get there, I'm gonna come back because I'm gonna show you uh, what my plans are for this block. As we come back, we're going to go ahead and take a look at my grid one more time because I went ahead and not only cut out block 67, but because of block 43 right below it is the same width, I went ahead and cut that one out too. So these four blocks are all light blue. That means I've cut them out and they're on the board. So I'm going to just show you what that looks like on the board. We'll get a preview of what this section is going to look like. Now because each one of these blocks have a width of 14 inches and all the seams to join this one section are the same. I'm going to go ahead and sew these four blocks together and make this one unit. Looking down below, we're going to start getting into some complicated piecing. And to the right, we have some blocks that are not all the same as well. So let's go ahead and make this a large unit by joining the seams right in between those blocks. Once that's sewn together, I'm gonna to color this in really dark so that I can see where uh, the four units have turned into one large unit. So we're gonna go ahead and move on. I'll piece these together here in just a minute. We're gonna move on to the top of the quilt. I want you to see block number 13 is 12 by eight. And so I've already cut that out, 12 by 8, just like you see here. And then around that block is some empty space all the way around. And I did that intentionally because I want to add a fabric border to this block. So I picked this fabric. Uh, I picked some pinks because, let me show you a picture here on how well this color goes with one of the shirts in her quilt. And I think she has three, two or three pink shirts, and the rest are all dark blues, grays, blacks, and a few white shirts. So I thought if she only has, you know, one or two or three little blocks in this entire quilt that are pink, the first thing you would see when you look at the quilt would be those pink blocks. Your eyes would go right to them. So I thought incorporating some pink fabric throughout the quilt would really Keep your eye moving from one place to another and your eye would just drift over the whole quilt instead of being drawn specifically to one block, you know, and noticing the pink blocks. So we're going to use this pink right at the top of the quilt. We're going to start off at pink and put it throughout the quilt. So let's take a look one more time at this grid. This, uh, each one of these blocks represents a two inch square. So we know we want to cut our borders two and a half inches wide and we're going to put a border on the top, bottom, and both sides of this block. Our border being two and a half inches. So I'm going to start by sewing the top and bottom. I'll press that and trim it even with the sides and then I'll add our side borders and we'll come back when I have this block all done.
as we come back you can see I have my block up here with the fabric border that border is two and a half inches wide and goes all the way around my block I think that'll be great for adding some pink up towards the left hand corner up at the top I went ahead and pieced all these four pieces together so now that is one unit and we have started working over here on this section so let's go ahead and take a look as we close for today at my grid and exactly where we are we're looking now at my updated grid because I went ahead and sewed the seams between these four pieces I colored this dark once I do that I know that this is all now one unit and my seams for that unit are going to run along the perimeter of this block down the road as we start having other sections it's going to be really easy to see where my seams will be when I start piecing together my larger chunks so up here we have a different section so I'm going to start coloring these blocks in a light pink as I cut them out we have this block done that's the one with the fabric border up at the top and that's up on the board so this is where we are so I think for the rest of today I'm going to go ahead and stop the video but I'm going to prep for tomorrow because uh, I can go ahead and start cutting out some of these other blocks and uh, as those of you who have made t-shirt quilts know that's probably the most boring part is adding the stabilizer and cutting out your blocks <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and fill up the rest of this afternoon with uh, with that I'll probably prepare block 5, 45, 20 I might change 36 a little bit I might make that a little bit bigger because I have some empty space there I'll cut block 4 block 21 and 42 and 65 and then uh, I think tomorrow we're gonna have fun doing some patchwork to fill in some of these uh, open areas between these blocks here and this one here I might do a pinwheel <laughs> so that's where we are and I just thought I would bring you along and uh, share this process with you it's really uh, working as we go again I don't really have any set topics but I'm hoping something that I shared today will help you in your quilt or give you an idea on how to do something if you've never joined any of my videos before I do have the grid sets this is the two inch grid I have a four inch a five inch and so on in my Etsy shop uh, the sets come with five different quilt sizes so we're working with the queen once this entire grid is filled up our quilt will measure 88 by 104 so the other quilt sizes are like a throw a twin a full and crib size I think I don't know I don't have it right in front of me but you can find that in my Etsy shop I'll put a link down below and I'm also going to have a listing for this uh, prep kit so the prep kit comes with two pages of columns for your colors to record and inventory your shirts as you measure and cut them apart and it comes with a hundred tabs that you can uh, put these onto your shirts with the sizes written on there and stay really organized as you're going along so I do have that in my Etsy shop as well uh, just a time saver you could draw you could write make your own list but really it's really fast if you just go and print this off right before you start and stay organized from the very beginning so I look forward to spending some time with you tomorrow uh, we have the uh, Hurricane Dorian will be our way tomorrow so hopefully uh, we don't have to deal too much with that we'll see and uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Bye, everybody.